Story 58 Andrew and Diana Words we know Particularly Harmony Opportunity Attention Mention Question Energy Efficiency Efficiently Worry Worried Worrying Brought Thought Ought Gesture Posture Nature Laugh Laughing Laughter Basket Basketball Basketballers Friend Friendly Friendship Dedicated Celebrated Camouflaged Solved Involved Revolved Belonged Lengthen Strengthen New sounds E as in chief Chief Grief Priest Shield Relief Thief Brief Believe Wield Belief Disbelief Peace Field Find some words in the story with E as in Chief Special words Regular Voluntary Valued Assumed Organized Weird Tongue Introduced Enthusiastic Irritable Irritably Heavy Heavily Before attempting to read the story, learn how to say each special word. If necessary, check its meaning. Make up a sentence using each special word. Andrew and Diana It all started when Andrew was just five years old. 
he was soon to start school. Up to this time, Andrew didn't particularly think about life. He just lived it. He had a mum and a dad, and his chief memory was of a new baby sister. He remembered that he didn't think much of her at first. She took too much of his mum's and dad's attention, as well as all the attention of any visitors. On top of that, he had to be quiet too much of the time, even though she cried for hours sometimes. However, that was in the beginning, and he was glad to have her now. Then it happened. Nobody expected it. His father suddenly died. Heart attack, they said. Yes, when he was only five with a new baby sister, his father just wasn't there anymore. Andrew couldn't clearly remember much of the time around the death. He remembered the priest coming, and he remembered feeling scared. What was going to happen to them all? Where his dad had been in his life had become an empty space, a sort of shadow. But Andrew did love his mother very much. At first, he felt grief whenever he looked at her. For the first weeks, she seemed shocked and sad, even when she was carrying his little baby sister. But life goes on whether you want it to or not. And although things were different, missing some sort of energy, Andrew got used to it. His mum got a job and she said they'd be fine. Andrew felt he'd have to be brave. He wanted to shield his mother from as much worry as possible. The day he started school, his mum dropped him off a bit early. They'd talked about this. She didn't think she should miss a morning from work so soon after beginning a new job. Andrew knew that this was one of those times he'd have to manage on his own, so as not to worry her. He remembered that the playground seemed enormous. And some of the kids seemed like giants. At one point, when he was beginning to feel panic, one of the dads came over and said, Good day, little mate. I'll show you where to go. It's not too good being lost on your first day, is it? Andrew felt a sense of relief as the man took him by the hand and led him to the correct room and to his teacher. Then the dad gave him a pat on the back, wished him luck, and left. Soon after, a friendly voice said, Gee, you're lucky. Your dad brought you. Andrew was struck dumb by this remark. He had no dad. What could he say? He just stared at the boy who said it. The friendly boy waited a while for Andrew to say something, and then wandered off. Later, Andrew found out that the friendly boy's name was Billy. Billy was five, and it was his first day too. And while Andrew was still feeling confused, a girl called Lucy said, Hi, was that your dad? Again he just stared. And when the teacher said, Hello, Andrew, he just kept on staring without speaking. He felt so awkward. What was going on? Andrew's tongue just wouldn't say, That's not my dad. I don't have a dad. He's dead. And I feel sad. Andrew felt he'd cry if he talked about his dad. It was easier for Andrew to put up with the kids, and the teachers, thinking he was a bit weird, than for him to admit to having no dad on his first day.
His silence, though, went way beyond the first day. It went on for four and a half years. It was amazing how he managed not to speak. His work was pretty good. The classes were large. He sat at the back, causing no trouble, and he learnt to nod and make gestures when he was directly spoken to. He never told his mother that he was tongue-tied at school. Some children laughed at him and teased him at first. Did a thief get your tongue? they would ask. But in time, they just left him alone. He felt the special aloneness of being misunderstood, but his tongue just wouldn't move. However, things changed when a girl called Diana moved into Andrew's street just two doors away from his place. There was a rough basketball court in an old park at the end of the street. Each day, after school, Andrew played there with some high school students. He liked them, and they liked him. His tongue certainly worked freely at these times. Then Diana turned up and asked if she could join in. They tried her out. She was Andrew's age and she was a great player. Her family had moved in two days before. She told Andrew about herself as they walked home. She hadn't wanted to move to this town because she was in the top basketball team at her old school. There she had played against other schools. Now she was hoping to join a team at her new school. Do you play in a team? she asked. When Andrew said that he didn't, she could hardly believe her ears. But you're so good, she said. Andrew felt pleased. As they got to her place, Andrew's mum drove up. Andrew introduced Diana and his mum said how pleased she was that they lived close by. When his mum went inside, Diana said, Your mum's so friendly. Is your dad here? My dad's dead. The words just came out. Oh, poor you, said Diana. After a moment, she added, See you tomorrow. And that was all. That night, Andrew felt a wonderful relief, as if an enormous load was lifted from him. He'd finally said it, and it was okay. As he lay in bed, feeling light, he experienced a floating sensation. The feeling of grief that he was so used to had just disappeared. The next day, Diana showed up at his school and was put in his class. The teacher said, Now, who can I sit you with? I don't suppose you know anyone yet. Diana looked quickly around the room and spied Andrew at the back. Oh, I know Andrew, she said. It would be great if I could sit with him. Andrew heard his classmates snigger, and he noticed that for a brief moment his teacher was taken aback, but he didn't care. His chest swelled with pride. For the first time, after so many years, somebody wanted to sit with him. Diana quickly became one of the popular students. She was nice. Cheery, kind, enthusiastic and energetic. Andrew couldn't believe what was happening. Diana simply assumed he was a regular guy and included him in everything. Diana's first questions were about basketball. Where's the ball? Is there a school team? Billy, who was a keen player, 
told her sadly that there wasn't a school team. Football, cricket and netball are the chief sports here, he said. There are only four of us who play basketball, he said, bouncing his ball. You, Andrew, and who else? she inquired. Andrew doesn't play, said Billy irritably. Of course he does. He's fantastic, Diana said. Billy looked at Andrew in disbelief. She threw the basketball to Andrew, not giving him time to think. He caught it expertly. Andrew had never before had a basketball in his hands at the school. A few minutes later, six of them, including Andrew and Diana, were heavily involved in a game. Andrew slotted in, just like that. Zone defence! Zone! he yelled. Those were the first words he had uttered at school. With the help of the sports teacher, Diana organised an inter-school team. It proved to be a top side. The players were enthusiastic and dedicated. In a very short time, it was as though Andrew had always been an accepted and valued member of the team. Later on, their lives took different paths. But a piece of Andrew's heart always belonged to Diana. Words we've used Peace Thief Believed Disbelief Shielded Wielded Briefly, chiefly, priest, priestly, regular, particular, voluntary, harmony, Tongue. Wonderful. Introduce. Suspicious. Enthusiastic. Ancient. Some new words. Enthusiasm. Enthusiastically. Regulation. Regularity. Introducing. Introduction. Volunteer. Engineer. Grieving, thieving. Read aloud. English expressions. Word. Phrase. Sentence. Opportunity. A golden opportunity. This storm is a golden opportunity for me to finish reading my book. Question The burning question is The burning question is who shall be the leader? Nature it's human nature. It's human nature to worry about your baby. Assumed. 
Assumed innocent. He is assumed innocent unless we prove he did it. Introduce. Let me introduce. Let me introduce my mother and my father. 